Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. I hope you've all had an incredible weekend. I'm so excited, as usual, to be delivering the call today. Uh, I've got some information for you guys. I have got some information, but as ever, I'm going to allow the call to fill up. We are exactly on time. I'm going to give it maybe one minute for those that are running just a little bit behind time because I don't run for those that are late. I run for those that are on time. Can you guys all hear, hear me clearly? Give me a thumbs up if you can all hear me clearly. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. I hope everyone's had an incredible weekend. Was the weekend lovely? Perfect, 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 perfect. Oh, guys, this is the highlight of my day. This is the part of my day that brings me the most joy and it sets me up for the rest of the day. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. I'm going to give literally just one minute for those that are running a little bit behind time and then I'm going to deliver. I'm going to deliver because I've got some things I want to talk about today. I've got some laws that I want to talk about today, some universal laws that we have to abide by. And when we abide by these laws, everything starts to just unfold and become beautiful. Absolutely, yes, it does. Right, we're one minute over. So as I said, I don't run for those people that are late. I respect your time and those that are here. Thank you. Guys, today, what I want to talk about is the law of reciprocacy. That's the law of giving and receiving. Why is this so important? Because this is how the universe works. It's a very, very, very simple principle. But the more you give, the more you shall receive. But it all really depends on how you give. Whether you give openly, whether you give with expectation, whether you give conditionally, you see, there are many different types of ways of giving. And many people give in different ways. But if you give with no expectation, if you give truly from your heart, if you give with love and just good energy, good vibration, it's incredible what happens. For those women on the line that have got partners, you all know when you just give them some praise, some adulation for the small things that they've done, what happens? They do more, right? And the women that understand their men, they get into their minds. They know nagging doesn't work. When you nag a man, he feels like, oh, really? What, again? She's moaning again. But when you just inspire him with that little piece of praise, all of a sudden he smiles, he feels fantastic, and he will do whatever you ask him. The parents that are in tune with their children, we do exactly the same. We praise our children for the small things they do. And what happens? They do more of those small things and the small things become bigger. But when you have parents that consistently chastise, when you have parents that consistently come down hard, when they expect their children to behave a certain way, the children will well and truly become self-fulfilling prophecies. But when you praise, when you give unconditionally, when you help them understand, all of a sudden your children behave differently. So this once again, as I said, it falls back into the law of reciprocity. It is a case of the more you give, the more you get. It's how the universe blesses you. And like everything in this world, when you understand the rules of engagement, when you understand how it all works, it all becomes very, very simple. Just keep giving. Just keep giving with no expectation. But that is the thing. A lot of the time people give conditionally or they have expectations. Well, if I give him this, maybe I'll receive that. That's not how it works. Because when you do give with expectation, you're not giving truly or freely from your heart. You're giving conditionally. Let's think about this. Do you love your children conditionally? No, there are no conditions to the way you love your children. That doesn't mean they're always right. But what I mean is there are no conditions as to how you love them. You're not going to love them as long as. You're going to keep giving that love regardless. Because that's the way you treat them. That's the way you want them to grow. That's the way you want them to understand life is. That you give unconditionally. And when you do that, 
it has a huge impact on how people behave around you. Where am I going with this? Because this is a program that is teaching you how to become better entrepreneurs. So where does this link in? Well, I want you to understand that as an entrepreneur, you must give as much as you can. But what you give as an entrepreneur is value. You stack everything with as much value as you can possibly give. You just keep giving, you just keep giving, but you make sure your clients, your students, whoever you're serving, you are giving them value. Because as an entrepreneur, if you have the thought process that I want to serve as many people as possible, I want to give as many people as I humanly can value, I want to touch as many lives as possible, that is where the shift happens. That's when you start making a difference. That's when you truly start touching lives. And when you start touching lives and affecting people, that's when everyone starts to see you in a different light and attach more value to you as a person. And it's amazing that the more value you give, guess what? You never ever then get questioned about the amount of price you charge because the investment you charge for anything, it's never about the cost of the investment. If someone is concerned over the cost of, a, of an investment, they'll only ever be concerned because you're not providing enough value. When you provide enough value, people will never be concerned about the cost of the investment. Because let's think about this. Why do people actually invest in something? People invest in something because of how you've made them feel. That's where the, there's an exchange of, of uh, currency. Let's think about this. When you buy a new car, yes, you might buy a car out of practicality, but your choice of vehicle goes down to how that car makes you feel. Does this make sense, guys? Give me a thumb up if this makes sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box if this makes sense. We buy, we invest in anything based on how we feel about it. So going back to you being an entrepreneur, you must absolutely give as much value as you possibly can. And how do you make a difference as an entrepreneur? As I said, you give value, but you might be thinking, well, well, how can I just give value? What, I'm just going to give value and like, I don't understand. Where does this link in? How, I, how do I attach this to anything? Well, what a true entrepreneur does is looks for problems. Because when you find a problem, you then provide a solution. And the bigger the solution, the more people that solution will serve, is the more you'll be remunerated, the more rewarded you will be. So this is once again where it comes back to value and comes back to giving and it comes back to serving because as an entrepreneur, your goal, your task, your, your main objective should simply be not making money because if your goal as an entrepreneur is I want to make as much money as possible, I promise you that will be short-lived. You may go through a period of time where you make a huge amount of money, you might make not much money, but whatever amount of money you make, it will be a short-lived journey. Your goal as an entrepreneur should be simply, how many people can I serve? How many lives can I touch? Any business that has longevity, it's all about serving. Okay, let's look at one of the world's, if not the world's biggest brand, Apple. Steve Jobs built Apple on the back of connecting with a type of person and serving that person's needs. 
Apple had never been the cheapest product. Other products have had the same functionality as Apple. Uh, here we go. Audi, how has this happened? Audi, you started sharing your screen. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let me take this back. Apple has, as I said, Apple, what they've done, they've, they've never been the biggest or the cheapest brand. But what they have done is, Audi, you need to stop sharing your screen. There will be a, a share button at the bottom, in the middle of the screen at the bottom. Go to that and stop sharing. <laughs> yep, you're closing down everything, which is great, but you need to go to the bottom of the screen and stop sharing. That in itself will give back the screen. But I will continue for my rest of everyone else who's here. Apple, as I said, have never been the cheapest brand. But what they do so incredibly well is they connect with their audience and they just give value. They connect and they give value. And when you give value, what happens then is quite simple. You interact with people. And based on that interaction, based on the value you're giving, that then creates that relationship. Thank you, Woody. Please don't share again. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to give freely. And what I mean by giving freely is with no ties, no connections, no expectations. Give freely with good energy. Because when you understand the law of reciprocity, you will completely understand that it's coming back to you. I'm going to put a caveat in that. However, it won't necessarily come back in the channel you expect it to come back in. This is why I say you have to give with no expectation because when it comes back and blesses you, when the universe blesses you, you won't necessarily know where, how, or from what angle it's going to bless you. But just understand you're going to get blessed. So just give freely with no expectations. You see, this all comes back and this is all connected with your own personal values. When I talk about your own values, we all have a belief system and our values are aligned with our beliefs. So if you only do things with an ulterior motive, it will soon become very, very clear because you're not giving freely and truly. Guys, does this make sense? Give us some thumbs up if this makes sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box if this makes sense. But you see, when your values are just plain and simply to serve, when your values are to serve as many people as humanly, as physically possible, what then happens is the universe will align with you and just continue to bless you. That's when the magic of what happens and a lot of people start saying, you know what, you are so lucky. No, it's not luck. It's that the universe is blessing me. The universe is blessing me because I am operating from a universal standpoint. I'm operating from alignment. My energy is pure. And what I'm doing is aligned with universal values. When you tap into that higher energy, opportunities will bless you when sometimes you'll face a brick wall and you'll think, you know what? How on earth am I going to overcome this? But as long as you have that faith, that belief that there will be a way through, over, under, round it, a way will be shown to you. But that only happens when you're operating in alignment, when your values are, when your values are pure, when your energy is in alignment with the universe, 
then these things happen for you. But I also want everyone to understand that there are a thousand and one different trails to the top of the mountain. Don't get stuck on one and believe that that is the only path. Because sometimes, as I said, there will be blockages. And sometimes these blockages will be overwhelming. They'll be insurmountable. And if you've given all of your energy to go over, under, through, around, and you still can't get past it, remember that there is another avenue. There are many other trails to the top of the mountain. Many other trails to the top of the mountain. So you can always get past it. You can always move through. You can always move beyond. Just keep giving. Make your only focus, I want to give as much value as I possibly can. That's all, that is your main job, your main role, your main responsibility as an entrepreneur. Any company, as I said, that has had longevity, they always find an angle to just keep giving to the market. And when they add enough value to their proposition, people don't question it. So this once again taps into your mindset, your mindset that everything you want can be achieved, but you can't doubt yourself. You can't doubt whether it is actually possible. When you feed into doubt, that is when you block yourself. At that point, it doesn't matter how much you're giving because you don't believe what you're doing. You don't believe why you're giving. You don't believe that you're going to be blessed in other ways. So you stop giving freely. I can't give anymore because, heh, listen to the catchphrase, I can't afford to. And that's one of the words I've asked you all to eradicate from your vocabulary is I can't. Because whenever you say, I can't, you shut your mind down to find the solutions. You have to say, how can I? But when you continue to just give freely, regardless, you'll be blessed. You could have a pound in your pocket or a dollar in your pocket. And if there's someone else that needs that dollar more than you, you shouldn't be afraid to give it. When you think, I can't give it because I will have nothing left. You're acting from a place of scarcity. You're not believing in abundance. When you truly believe in abundance, that is when you will give freely. So once again, it goes back to belief systems and values, what you truly believe in. Any entrepreneur that is incredibly successful and it seems as though they just flourish with whatever they do. If you have the opportunity to talk to them, I promise you there are two things that will come out of their mouth very, very early on in the, in the conversation. One will be gratitude, that they are eternally grateful for everything. And two is that they believe in abundance. They believe that we live in a universe where there is more than enough for everyone. So consequently, they just give. I'm just trying to think of, uh, there was a very famous entrepreneur and he got to a point where he was excessively wealthy and he decided that, you know what? I've got more money than I can ever spend in my lifetime. So I'm gonna give it all away. And you know, from the point he tried to give away his money, he couldn't give it away. And what I mean by that is, whenever he gave it away, opportunities were blessing where more money just kept coming to him. So the more he tried to freely give it away, is the more opportunities get blessing him. How crazy does that sound? That he had so much money, but yet he couldn't give it away or he could give it away, but he kept getting blessed with more money. So his level of wealth didn't, didn't uh, decrease. In fact, his level of wealth increased because he was then at that point giving truly 
with no expectation. He didn't want it back. He had already decided that I am truly abundant. I've got more than I will ever need. So I'm going to give it all away. And when he was given from that standpoint, when he was given from that position, he just kept getting blessed. Now, I know some people are thinking, well, you know what, I'm here struggling. <laughs> Why can't life be like that for me? Because of mindset. It's because your head is in the wrong space. Because you know what? No matter how challenging things seem today, you have to understand two things. One, there's always someone in a worse position than you. So be grateful for where you are. And two, you are today where you are based on your previous choices and decisions. So if you are today based on your previous choices and decisions, does that not mean that if we change our current thought processes and change our current choices and decisions, that our future position will be different? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box if that makes sense. So ultimately, we always have to think about where we are, what we're doing, what our current choices and decisions are, and how we're operating. If you are operating in line with universal laws, if you truly understand and believe that the universe operates in a certain way, you will have no doubt, you will have no disbelief, you will only have belief that I can have what I want, I can manifest what I want. It doesn't happen on your timeline and that is probably the thing that frustrates people the most. It doesn't happen exactly when you want it. You have to employ this word, and I know a lot of people become frustrated by this word, patience. You have to employ patience. But alongside patience, you have to have belief. But this is another thing you have to understand. You have to understand that repetition is the mother of all skill. And why do I say that? I say that because quite simply, when you are moving forward, you will hit challenges, you will hit brick walls. And when you hit those brick walls, what will happen is you will fall back into your natural default position, your default mechanism. And what I mean by that is your mind will go back to where you always feel comfortable going back to. But your place of comfort has got you to where you are today, correct? And if you are not currently satisfied with where you are today, does it not make sense that your place of comfort will not elevate you and move you forward? So, this is where I come back to, repetition is the mother of all skill. Because if you've actually made a choice and a decision that you're gonna push through you have to push through that uncomfortable position where you bang against that brick wall. You have to keep pushing through. And when you push through with perseverance, consistency, and a belief that you can get through, you will break through. When you're faced with the challenge and you want to curl up and go back to your place of comfort, Understand that that will keep you in your place of comfort. Or should I say your place of discomfort? The only place of comfort is in your mind. But your surroundings may well be uncomfortable. But the reason why you feel comfortable there is because it's what you know. But guys, we need to remember that growth happens outside of your comfort zone. You cannot grow when you're sitting down comfortably. You have to be uncomfortable. As an entrepreneur, you have to wholeheartedly become comfortable being uncomfortable. Does that make sense, guys? You have to become comfortable being uncomfortable. 
So when you hit against that brick wall, when you hit against that brick wall and you can't seem to move forward, just understand that your repetitive behavior of pushing and pushing will give you that breakthrough. And when you break through that brick wall and you've gone through the other side, you will not be able to return back to that place of lack, back to your previous comfort zone. Because you've now created a new element of comfort, which will be where you've broken through to. And when you arrive at that place of breakthrough, that is when you set your new goals and expectations, your new goals and your new challenges of where you want to be. And if getting to that place of breakthrough, you've been operating as an entrepreneur, so you've been giving value, continue to give, continue to give. Let me give you a prime example. Guys, I don't have to do this call every day. This call for me, Monday through Friday, is out of choice. And it's because I want to give as much value as possible. But you know, one of the greatest blessings I get by doing this call is I receive energy. When I see the nodding heads, when I get the yeses in the chat box, I know that people are receiving what I'm delivering in the right manner. And that energizes me. For me to deliver this kind of value, for me to know that people are taking use from what I'm delivering. Some of the messages that I've had back make me have to do this call every day. When people express, you have made a huge impact in my life delivering your calls every single day. When people have said to me, and I kid you not, I've had messages telling me, some of the 30 minute daily catch up calls you've delivered have changed my life. How can I not continue delivering? How can I not continue giving? To know you've had that kind of impact and all you were doing was giving what's stored in your head, that energizes me. And this is based on the law of reciprocity. I'm reciprocating. All I'm doing is giving, but not to receive. I'm giving because I know it's the right thing to do. So I consistently give my own energy. Guys, the amount of times I've told people, I come off this call tired. I need to take a 10 or 15 minute break before I do anything because I feel spent. I'm giving you what's stored up here. And if it's helping, if it's delivering value, if it's changing people, if people are getting something from it, that's it. I've achieved my outcome. Those of you that know my story, the reason why I got into public speaking after I injured myself was quite simple. I said, if my story, if my experience can help one person, then my injury was worthwhile. If my story, if my experience can add value, can inspire, can change, can make a lasting impact on just one person, then it's all been worthwhile. It hasn't happened in vain. And the reason why when I was speaking, I chose to speak to kids is because they are our next generation. They are the future. And if we can inspire change in the next generation, As small as it may be, we change the world. If we can impact the next generation and they can inspire just a few of their friends, you then create a movement. And this all happened from giving. But giving with no attachment, with no expectation, giving freely, not wanting anything back. How often, and I'm going to finish on this note, how often when you're walking down the street 
and you see someone and you just smile. How often do they smile back? I would say nine out of 10 times, right? Nine out of 10 times, if you look at someone and you smile, they will smile back. Even if they think you're a little bit strange because you're smiling, they will still smile back. Even in London, which I say is one of the, the busiest cities in the world where everyone seems to be in a hurry. If you make eye contact with people and you smile, they will generally smile back. Just remember that, guys. If you can give just a small piece of yourself to someone today, listen to the response. Listen to the way you'll be blessed. If you can deliver a small message to someone about how grateful you are to have them in your life, about how lucky you feel to have them in your life. Listen to the response you get. I would challenge each and every one of you today to send a message to someone that is deep in your heart, whether it be friend or family, and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. You're not giving with an expectation. Give it from the bottom of your heart. Give it truly with gratitude. They will feel if you're giving it truly from the bottom of your heart. And listen to the impact. I'll finish on that note. Guys, thank you for your time. I enjoy giving the energy each and every day, Monday through Friday. I love this. You guys didn't have to be here. You chose to be here. But I just want you all to remember that all can and will be achieved one step at a time. You know, understand. <laughs> oh, Rita, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Understand, guys, all can and will be achieved one step at a time. I am completely committed to you guys. How committed are you to yourselves? If you are committed to change and you want to make that change in your life, just remember, I'll be here on this same bad channel tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys. Have an incredible day and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Much love. Take care. Bye-bye.